tea time. Yep. All right, we got some enamel pins. Yep. So now if we've got some Joy pins. These are the limited edition enamel pins that we've got. Joy is um, got the most colors. It's super adorable. It's a pin. It's small, um, but looks just like a happy, uh, joyful uh, arcade game controller. Uh, use it to signify how much you love making arcade games. Um, yep. Can you want me to show off the overhead? Yeah, why not? Because we have this overhead. Not okay. this overhead. Yeah. Oh, this raspberry pie out of the way. Hold on. Um, so yeah, this is the Joy enamel pin. She's so happy and joyful. Hi, I'm Joy. Um, uh, these are limited edition. When we run out, we're not going to make any more probably. So uh, pick them up while you can. Um, comes with the butterfly clutch. Super nice little Joy enamel. And we also have another enamel pin. Yeah, do you want to just go to mm -hmm. um, the nice photos first? Yep, we've got a Sparky the Blue Smoke Monster. Just this like that. This has been by far the favorite one, I think, for a lot of folks. Yeah. Um, Blinka and Sparky seem to be leading the, the pin popularity. You know, when you make a mistake on a design, maybe you plug in power backwards yeah. or something, uh, Sparky's there. He's hanging out with you. And uh, he's a little bit mean, but it's okay. He also gives you good advice, like don't connect uh, power to ground or... Don't put the tantalum capacitor in backwards. Um, also comes uh, with a clutch, comes with this little uh, packing board. Uh, we got a bunch of these, but yeah, pick one up and uh, show your sparky fanness, fanboy, fangirlness with uh, this enamel pin. Okay. Next up, these are great. I got these for you. Yeah, I know. This is my present for you. It's $1. Uh, you get a three pack of these dual clips. Um, these are just really, really fast prototyping wire clips. Uh, they've got, like, you know, we've had ones where you have like screws or like latches. Um, these are great for prototyping. You know, they're not ridiculously strong, so I wouldn't use them for like a finished product yeah. maybe. I'll tell you why I use these. So here, here's my life. I get like a little bit of time at five in the morning sometimes to work on things, and yeah. then maybe sometimes late at night. But my Monday through Friday, it's all late for all the time. Of course, yeah. weekends and all that. But the limited time I have to build prototypes for yeah. stuff and actually do electronics. Um, Super limited. Quickly putting things together just to get it to work. Because a lot of the times I'm building something and there's some code or Lady and are working on something. And it's just like, it's just super fast. Especially, um, and I think what these are going to get used for And you too. don't even have time to solder. Like, you're like, I don't have time to turn on the Yeah, solder. especially if you're in a classroom environment too or doing yeah. workshops. This is super fast. So... You press down, it opens up the aperture, and you just slide the wire in. Um, you can use, like, we used, I tried it with, like, 36-gauge wire, and it worked fine. 10-gauge um, wire is too big for the aperture, but 16-gauge uh, will work okay. Um, but, yeah, you just you just plug and go, and it's really easy. And I like it. They come in, in doubles, because usually you have, like, two wires for power and ground or something, or signal and ground. Um, so you get three sets of these duals. And, um, you know, they work great. They're super simple and they're very intuitive. I think even kids could use these for wiring up projects and no yeah. screwdriver or tools required. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're perfectly fine for just about anything you'd want to wire. And uh, they're nice and slim, too. They're not too big. Yeah, and I have lots of jumper wires. I'm, I'm usually just, like, grabbing anything. And it's just, like, if you value time, this yeah. is a time saver. Okay. Next up. And they're white so you can color them if you want. Um, okay, so we got the Andrea Pure Audio Mic. This is kind of interesting. So this is a company, and what they're really good at is making these beamform microphones. This is a stereo beamforming microphone. You can see this, like, two eyes on that little, uh, you know, device. That's two microphones that are um, going to be really good at noise cancellation. They're good at picking up voice commands. That's what they're designed for. Um, so they're good for, like, kiosks or robots or something where you want to have voice commands. And um, they come with, it comes with a little USB adapter. And this, in particular, is designed to go with a Raspberry Pi 3. So if you want to build your own, um, you know, voice assistant, voice command assistant, like an Alexa, like um, Siri, but you don't want to use their services, by using this hardware, you don't have to use one of their online services. You can use um, the software that comes with this that um, doesn't require an internet connection, it does all of the audio recognition on board, which is really nice, uh, especially if you, again, don't have internet connectivity or your internet connectivity is really slow. 
the trade-off is you get a limited um, vocabulary. Now, the vocabulary that you get is pretty good. Like you turn on music, turn volume up, turn volume down, close the door, you know, open the valve, whatever. There's a there's a list in the product um, information of all the instructions that you can use with this microphone, and it has a wake-up word called Blue Genie. So you say, hello, Blue Genie. Um, turn on the music and it will recognize it. And we tried it here in the factory where it's, when the machines are on, it's extremely loud. Um, there's a lot of noise and a lot of uh, white noise and um, pink noise. And it, was, it worked really well. So we tried this out in a very noisy environment. It was very good for picking up voices. So I think this would be really good for like a robot or um, some home automation project where you don't want to share your information with another service or you don't want to use another service. You want it to live all on uh, the computer. And again, it does it, the microphone itself is really good quality. It's, it's excellent at the noise cancellation to pick up a noise yeah. in uh, very loud, messy environments. And remember, if we don't make voice assistants, someone will make them for us. So it's always good to at least understand these things, mm -hmm. how they work. And then it's getting easier to build your own as well. So this is a helpful so, thing for those yep, types of projects. This is for the Pi 3. So check that out. I thought it was kind of interesting and uh, made here in New York, Okay. New York State. Next up. The Pixel. Um, we love scripted languages on my controllers. If you haven't noticed, I'm wearing my CircuitPython shirt. Maybe you're not into Python. Maybe you're into JavaScript. Well, we carry the Esperino line, and that's a JavaScript interpreter on microcontrollers. And in this case, um, it's JavaScript on the NRF52832, which is also one of our favorite chips. And this version, we have like the Puck, which is like a small little portable version with sensors. This version has the NRF52832. That's the module here. And it comes with a coin holder. It doesn't come with a coin battery, but it comes with a holder. Um, uh, power through uh, micro USB. And you program it through um, web Bluetooth or through like a Bluetooth connection. Um, and then you've got four buttons and you've got, um, uh, I think it's like 120 by 64 pixel monochrome display. It's very low power, so it can run off a coin cell. That's why it's not color. If it's a color display, you have to have a backlight and it would uh, not be able to run off a coin cell. But another nice thing is that it's got these Arduino headers. So you can plug in all sorts of shields and you can check out the documentation. They've got um, JavaScript code for a wide range of shields. You can plug in and make um, more advanced uh, projects with sensors or GPSs or cellular modems, all sorts of good stuff like that. And um, I, you know, the Esperino is very popular. People like it for JavaScript microcontrollers. You can uh, do a lot, especially if you're uh, comfortable with... If you're on the fence about like doing electronics, because it's hardware, but you know some JavaScript, this will get you this started. This is great. Yeah, uh, and you and right I away. really like the quality of the hardware and the design that comes from uh, this uh, Esperino project. So we carry a bunch of different styles. We have a breadboard one, and we have a Bluetooth puck. But this is kind of a really good, like, you get a lot here. You get the Arduino compatible headers, Zenora 52, um, Bluetooth, and he's written some great software to program it, four buttons, and uh, the LCD on front, just showing off the demo here. So great addition to your scripting on microcontrollers. All right, and the star of the show besides you and the community, Lady Ada, is this coming soon because we're about to put it in the store. Coming soon. Going to the store in a day or two. Um, just didn't quite make it to the show. It's okay, we have it. We got one working. Um, the Feather M4. Wow, you've been waiting for this. Feather M4 featuring the SAMD51 processor, running at 120 megahertz, uh, 512K of flash, 192K of RAM, uh, M4 has floating point support, has um, memory caching support, which is really great. I've, I've been turning that on and using it in the Feather form factor you know and love. Yep. Um, got NeoPixel, got two megabytes of flash, got some proto area. We're using um, the SAMD51 J19. The reason this Feather took a little bit longer than expected is we originally designed this with the G19 and then realized that it doesn't have I2S. The I2S was the last thing we checked and we realized for some reason that size chip didn't have I2S enabled. Why? I don't know. If someone at Microchip could tell us, it would be great. So we quickly we designed it to use the 64 pin QFN J19. Now you have I2S. We know I2S works. We've tested it. Um, dual one mega sample per second DAC. Dual uh, one mega sample per second ADC. Parallel capture so you can do camera input. We've got some code. Yeah, we we'll did some tests. It's impressive. Um, it's incredibly fast for CircuitPython. Of course, you can use it with Arduino. We have a working Arduino core. It works great. Um, we've tested all of our Featherwings with it. 
But if you're using with CircuitPython, you're going to be very, very happy. You're not going to run out of memory, and it's going to be very speedy. The floating point support in particular, because um, uh, variables in Python can naturally uh, become floating points. Um, those are very, very, very fast All because right. you have hardware support. Do you have any for demos you're going to show with this thing? No. No. Not yet. Yeah, but it's not out yet, though. Later. It, I haven't set it up for a different for, for a different, different thing. Okay. But um, we will show more Feather projects soon. Um, Scott's got some projects with the Feather M4 running Circuit Python, and I've got some projects with the Feather M4. Um, we have a lot planned for this board. But everybody knows what they're getting. They're getting like the Feather compatibility with all of our wings and then this ultra high powered fast chip. Um, so sign up, we'll get th some in the store and uh, you'll be impressed. We'll get, we'll get a bunch of, well, we have an MP3 decoding project that we're gonna show off. Um, we've got the synthesizer project, we're showing off the TFT stuff. Yeah. It's all kind of bubbling and you're gonna see it blossom into a, uh, okay. a wonderful uh, display of high powered electronics. And that's mm -hmm. the new products. That's the new products.